Ugh, I hope this works. Hey guys and gals, it's me, Sweet Rocket, and you might be wondering why I'm back here again. Basically, there's this weird interrupted guy that's, you know, attacking my house, and apparently he wants to interrupt our world, apparently. And right now, Lena is battling him, and right now I'm here to think of a plan, so yeah, he won't find me in here, so it'll be easier. But the thing is, I cannot really think of a plan, and this glove keeps telling me to review Avengers Endgame, apparently. Right now, he's not saying, like, next week, but... Yeah, he keeps telling me to review it now for some reason. I don't know why and I don't know how that will help the situation, but I have no other option right now. So, uh, so um, yeah, let's just do it. So, um, uh, here we go. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, I'm going to start off with a non-spoiler review and then I'm going to go on to some spoilers. So at the start of the non-spoiler review, I'm actually going to start off with, you know, a little something that I usually start off at the end of the non-spoiler review. And that's usually when, you know, I talk about Marvel movies, I usually say like, you can watch it, you know, you know, without watching the previous movies, but it's more, you can appreciate it more if you watch the movies beforehand, you know, the other movies, of course. But for this movie, it's very different. You actually have to, I'm not sure you can actually, you have to watch all the movies exactly, but it actually does feel like it because this is like the ending of, you know, the entirety of this Infinity Saga which is spamming since, you know, Iron Man 1 to, you know, you know this movie. So, yeah, there's a lot of callbacks to uh, most of the movies in, you know, the MCU's history. So, yeah, you have to understand, you know, how, what, what has Iron Man been up to and what has Captain America been up to and Thor and, you know, whatever how, you know, how these characters have been evolved to lead up to this point and why they did what they did in Avengers Endgame, so it makes sense. So, yeah, it is a bit unfortunate that that has to be the case, but still, I think they managed to do it very well, and I feel like I'm going to explain that later in the spoiler review. First off, I actually want to talk about, you know, the action of this film, because I feel like I don't think there's going to be anything. I'm not going to explain what the action sequences are, but the action sequences in this movie are pretty satisfying. You may have to wait a while, it's not that often in this movie because they're kind of focusing on something else. But still, if you see the action sequences, they are worth your money. So that alone is worth your money, that's what I'm saying. But the, yeah, they're kind of focusing on a different aspect. Is that kind of more, you know, a drama way? Not really that dra you know, dramatic, I guess, in a way. A drama, basically. But the thing is, I kind of feel like you won't get bored with this whole, you know, drama idea because the thing is, behind this whole drama thing is actually some kind of, I have to, I don't know what else to say, like nerdy stuff, like something that will actually keep you excited and like, yes, this is happening or something like that. So yeah, I kind of feel like um, it's still, I feel like it's, I really like how they, you know, it blend the drama sequence as well into this movie, in a comic book movie. Because, you know, it is kind of boring. You're here for, you know, some big entertainment and you have this, you know, there are big things. But to be honest, it kind of fits because the thing is... Okay. And this world is weird. But anyways, yeah, I kind of feel like it works because, you know, this is the end game. This is the last chapter. Well, I mean, for the Infinity Saga anyways, the MCU is still going to go on after this. But for the Infinity Saga, I feel like it's best to have these, you know, drama sequences in this film. I uh, did an Instagram story on, you know, when I watched the movie and at the end I actually told you guys that you should sink in, you know, the universe beforehand before you watch this movie because it's gonna change the MC forever. And to be honest, it's a good idea that they, you know, change it up a bit because I feel like this is the perfect movie to do it. I was thinking they were gonna do it in Infinity War but I forgot this movie exists. So I kind of feel like this is the best w this is the best place to change, you know, the MCU forever. It's not just, you know, several changes to to the universe, there's big changes in this universe. So yeah, you better watch out for that for, you know, the guys who didn't watch the movie yet. So um yeah, speaking of, for you guys who already watched the movie, it's finally time to get into the spoiler warning. I wanna go the I wanna go there to talk about more about this movie because I can't really say that much without, you know, spoiling it. So without further ado, Let's get into spoilers. Um, sorry, I forgot. I hope this works. Um, cue the spoiler warning. Lena, can you hear me? Cue the spoiler warning. Lena! Ah, ah, I heard you loud and clear, Daniel. Ah, just, just give me a minute.
huh, thank goodness it worked. I hope, I cannot really see it from here. But anyways, um, yes, as I said in the non-spoiler review, I want to go into the whole, you know, you should watch the previous movies before uh, watching this one type deal, or, you know, going deeper into it in this spoiler, in this spoiler review. So, yeah, I'm going to talk, talk about it right now. So, um, yeah, I kind of feel like it's interesting because the thing is, it's not just like they put it there just for a nice little reference to, be, you know, for people to go, you know, like, oh my goodness, it's that thing from that previous movie or whatnot. No, it's not just for, you know, that. Not just for, you know, a lot of nerds or whatever, a lot of fans to, you know, um, like, go, go geeking, it out, geeking out about it. No, it's actually there for a reason. The thing is, it actually feels more impactful if you watch the previous movies. Because I kind of feel like it's not like, you know, it's just a reference. It feels like a... a you know, an evolution, like, we come this far and whatnot. This movie takes place five years after Infinity War. Well, you know, um, most of the movie does. And, you know, at the start, we also have, you know, stuff that happens, like, maybe a few days after the snap. And then they go, you know, kill Thanos, and then it goes to five years later. I remember I said in my Let's Predicted video that I said that it would be cool to see what happened to the entirety of the society, you know, after the snap and how, you know, the harass you know, the rest of the half of the people who are still alive, you know, deal with this type of situation. But we don't really get to see that much of it. We see a few, you know, a few times on how, how it happened, what, what has happened, but it's not that much. It's a bit unfortunate. I kind of feel like it would be cool to go into that concept, but not sure if you can actually do it in any other movie. But yeah, I kind of feel like it's a bit unfortunate we didn't go, we didn't dive into that in the film. But the thing is, I kind of feel like they don't want to, because they don't want to really go to, you know, dig deep into some new stuff and instead, you know, dig deep into some old stuff and, you know, I put it here to, you know, um, form the movie, I guess, in a way. Instead of using new stuff, you know, make, you know, making new stuff to form the movie, it's mostly just old stuff. There are new stuff in this movie, like um, the, what people, you know, call Professor Hulk now, which is basically Bruce Banner and Hulk now merge into one, Brains the Brawn. You know that stuff. I kind of feel like it's fun to see this, you know, version of Hulk. It's a really nice version of Hulk. It's not the Hulk that we ever seen before, and it's a really fun Hulk. And and that's the thing. This movie actually has a lot of funny moments, which is a bit surprising to me because a lot of people say that this is gonna be a DC movie, like well, you know, DC movies, you know, in the past, like Batman vs Superman, is gonna be really dark. But no, it's not the case. There's actually it does still feel like a Marvel movie. There are, you know, sure there are some dark parts in this film, but there are still some fun moments in this film that a lot of people will enjoy. So, yes, I'm glad that they have that in. And uh, what else that is new? Um, Captain Marvel has a new haircut, I guess. Yeah, one thing I also realized that Captain Marvel doesn't really show up that much in this movie, which is so surprising because the thing is, they, you know, they put her as, you know, the one that started it all. For real, it's not Captain America or Iron Man. Well, they're, they're also the ones who kind of started it all. This kind of started the whole Avengers concept, which of course we see and in the film, you know, he, Nick Fury used her, you know, her middle name to, you know, make the Avengers initiative. But I kind of feel like it's weird that he did, she didn't really hang out the most, hang out mostly with the Avengers and talk about, you know, she is actually the one who made this whole idea of the Avengers, which is, it's so weird that she didn't appear that much. I mean, I heard a lot of people, I heard there's, some people out there who don't really like Captain Marvel, but still, I kind of feel like they could have redeemed her in this film if you know people have problems. I kind of feel like this movie could have redeemed her if he actually showed up more and actually have you know you know interacted with the Avengers and all that. So yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that we didn't get to see much of Captain Marvel in this film. Now we go on to my favorite plot device in all of movie history. Well, I'm not really sure if I have any other favorite as of now. I cannot really remember, but. Yeah, I'm talking about time travel, and it's all thanks to Ant-Man and the whole quantum realm thing. They basically manipulate the quantum realm in order to get to a different place in time. So yeah, the time travel rules are very different from what, you know, we're used to in other movies like Back to the Future. Basically, instead of, you know, changing, you know, the future when you go back to the past and, you know, did something there, you actually just created an alternate universe. So yeah, it's a bit confusing. I mean, like, it's I can still understand it, but it's a bit confusing. That means... You can just go back in time to that same period in time without meeting your other self, you know, tamper with time. So you just go, you can go again and again and again. And you can also go to that alternate future that curated. So it's essentially also dimensional travel in a way. So yeah, it's a bit confusing, but I kind of feel like it's understandable that they use this type of time travel so that people, 
so that the Avengers can actually go back in time to get the Infinity Stones without interrupting the main timeline and, you know, confusing people more with, you know, this whole time travel stuff and how their timelines perform. And I feel like one of the interesting ideas that they have in this film, and this is what we, me and, me and my friend Dylan call it, is basically essentially deleted scenes. Well, they're not really deleted scenes, but they do feel like deleted scenes for, well, for example, in Avengers 2012, remember when all the Avengers go up to, you know, to Loki and, you know, they, you know, do the whole posing thing and at, Hawkeye was like, go about to shoot an arrow to Loki and the Avengers team play was like, dun, 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 and then Loki is like, he wants that drink now, I think. <laughs> so yeah, usually it cuts there and goes to the next scene, but no, instead, instead we actually get to see what happens after they, you know, um, arrest Loki. And of course, we actually got to see Hydra getting the scepter, which of course leads into Avengers Age of Ultron. So yeah, you get the point here. You usually see scenes that you never see before. So yeah, in, you know, in the movies that see beforehand. It's a concept for time travel that we never actually see that much before. So I really like that they actually put that in. And during the time travel sequence, we actually got our first major death. And I was hoping for a death back in, you know, you know, a major death back in Infinity War, and we finally get it here in Endgame. And the way it happened, it was like this. I actually, when I was watching it, I was actually reacting when, when I was reacting to it. I was actually like, okay, War Machine and Nebula are gonna get the Power Stone, and Hawkeye and Black Widow are gonna get the Soul Stone. Wait a minute. They're getting the Soul Stone. One of these two people are gonna die. Yeah, one of these two people died, and that was Black Widow. It was a very, they really did the, you know, the death well. Uh, the, the, I know it sounds weird, but yeah, I kind of feel like the way they set it up is actually, they actually did it pretty well. And I actually feel like this also is here to trick you as well. Because the thing is, Black Widow died, but Hawkeye didn't die. But, and probably maybe people will think like, oh, Hawkeye didn't die because he has a family. So that means Tony Stark isn't gonna die, right? So, um, yeah, a little trickery there, you know, to make people not expect what's gonna happen forward. So, yeah, I really like that's also the case there. Also, during the time travel sequence, Thanos actually finds out about, you know, the future Avengers, you know, the Thanos back in 2014, back in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. And I feel like I really like that Thanos, kid, Thanos is actually, you know, it's not like he's a very different Thanos in the past. When, you know, the Avengers meet him, he still is the same Thanos that we have seen back in Infinity War. And it doesn't feel unnatural because I kind of feel like the Thanos character can really understand what happened in the future and, you know, the whole goal of him, you know, snapping his fingers. So, um, yes, I kind of feel like he kind of understands what happened in the future and this leads into him being the actual Thanos of the present, So, which of course is already dead. So, yes, I kind of really like it. It, it. I really like it. That's pretty much all I can say. So Thanos sends Nebula to the future, you know, the past Nebula. The sky says, you know, the future Nebula in order to hack into the time machine in order to, you know, bring Thanos to the, you know, to the present. But he's kind of too late because, you know, Hulk actually snapped his fingers. Oh, I almost did it. But anyways, he snapped his fingers and everyone, you know, everybody's back. Just like that. And I feel like it's a bit unfortunate they just reveal it straight away that it actually worked. I kind of feel like they could have waited until, you know, the big action sequence and all the heroes, you know, coming back. That will be a lot more satisfying and be like, yes, the snap worked! So, um, yeah, I kind of feel like they could have, you know, did that instead of revealing it straight away. But, uh, yes, all the heroes come back in a big action sequence. You got circles everywhere. Just everywhere, you know, showing all the heroes from, you know, the MCU. You got Spider-Man, you got Doctor Strange, you got Black Panther. Even Howard the Duck is there, that's why, that's right, Howard the Duck is there. He's actually there, you can actually see him, he's right there. You, you cannot really see him, he's in the background. He's right there, uh, trust me, he's there. Go watch Endgame again and you'll see him. So, um, yeah, he was there with Ravages, by the way, if you want to know where he is. But anyways, yes, it's a big action sequence with all the heroes fighting Thanos' army. And I feel like it really, you know, symbolizes, you know, how far we come in the MCU. We got all these people fighting Thanos off. So, yes, I really like that they put that scene in. But the person who was able to defeat Thanos was Iron Man. He snapped his fingers. Again, I, I keep doing that. I, I feel like I want to snap my fingers. But anyways, he snapped his fingers as he said his important line, I am 
Iron Man. <laughs> so, um, yes, I feel like it's pretty great that we have, you know, uh, Iron Man to do the final blow. Not only because, you know, he is the one who started the MCU in the first place, but I kind of feel like it really shows um, Tony Stark finally achieving what he wants to, you know, he wants to do. Because the thing is, all he wants is peace. So, yeah, he kind of, you know, try hard time and time again, but there's always a problem in the way. Back in Iron Man, he kind of, you know, wanted to de develop weapons, to, de develop weapons to, you know, you know, to, you know, you know, for peace. But then later on, he realized, you know, some of the weapons are actually going to actually be used for, you know, terrorists. And then he stopped that and become Iron Man, and then later on, it leads into some more problems like in Age of Ultron with, you know, Ultron. But now he finally achieved it, and he also, you know, also kind of, you know, did a second chance and also, you know, have a child and now he's kind of more normal than usual and it's kind of more peaceful now so I kind of feel like he deserves the rest that he deserves at the end of Endgame and I also really like that after that during the I don't know what you call it a memorial something like that I, for, I forgot what it's called but you know when the when Tony Stark died they actually have this flower with you know the whole Tony Stark has a heart uh, um, heart thing <laughs> that actually was going onto the ocean and then the people who saw it, actually, everybody, we see all the people from the MCU, well not everybody, but the main people in the MCU, you got to see the Guardians, you get to see, um, um, sorry, I'm in the last words, kind of, you got to see Pepper Potts, of course, you see the older Avengers, you got to see, yeah, pretty much everybody, even the kid from Iron Man 3 was there. So yes, I kind of feel like this really shows you that Tony Stark started all of this, I really like that, that really symbolizes that well. And uh, yeah, and also a fun little thing after that, as that later on, um, Happy decided to ask Morgan, which is, you know, Tony Stark's daughter, to, you know, what, he want, what she wants to eat. And then she said cheeseburgers. That's right, we got a reference to freaking cheeseburgers in this movie. I knew going to Burger King and doing that skit wasn't for nothing. I can act I actually remind you guys that cheeseburgers is what Tony Stark likes. So, yes, you're welcome, I guess. So, um, yeah, so I kind of feel like after that, I mean, kind of feel like after that, well, after that, uh, Captain America decides to return the stones back to the alternate reality, I guess, that they created, and, you know, I get back, give back the hammer as well to Thor. I wonder what happened to Thor once that happened. Maybe he got the lightning powers without the hammer sooner? I don't know. So, um, yeah, Captain America brings everything back, but he didn't come back to, you know, the reality that, you know, he, he lives in, of course. Instead, he decides to stay in the past to be with Peggy and, you know, do the dance that we have, you know, that has been said a lot in, you know, the past. And, you know, he finally gets to dance with Peggy and the movie ends there. So, yes, I really like how, you know, it ends. And I also like the credits as well. I love the credits. So you can see at the end, you know, the main characters are the ones that come in last. And, of course, Robert Downey Jr. is the last one, you know, signing off. Hopefully, sorry, I, I need to be careful with this, but anyways, yeah, that's how the movie ends. There's not an end credit scene in sight. Instead of in, you know, at the end, at the very end, we actually get to see, I think it's the same sound as, you know, the time that Iron Man, you know, it was building the first Mark for the, the first Mark 1s, you know, building the first Iron Man suit, of course. So I really like, that's a really nice touch. I was like, I, that's what I keep selling to a lot of people. It's like, no, I know there's an egg, I know there's no end credit scene, but just please stay at the end. There's something really nice to do. I keep telling all my friends that. So um yeah, so yeah, that's the movie. I don't think this is gonna be the best movie of 2019, but instead it's gonna be an epic and you know great conclusion to you know a movie series has been spamming 22 movies since 2008. And come on, I kind of feel like you kind of you can literally just stop watching Marvel movies after this movie. I mean, sure, there's gonna be movies after this, but still, if you can, if you want to, you know, you know, stop watching Marvel movies, you're tired of them, I guess. This is a great conclusion. Yeah, that's what I think of the movie, and plus, now I think about it, some people are also gonna think that this is just like a, a total geek fest. I mean, sure, some of the stuff that I, again, as I mentioned, some of the stuff are impactful, the way they reference it, but still, there are a lot of people who are gonna just see this and say that's just a total geek fest. But yet again, I mean, like, yeah, this is technically kind of a. This is technically how you know the first Avengers was. It was a total geek fest when it came out. So who knows? Maybe this is intentional.
You again? What are you doing here? Um, hi, I guess. Talking book? Oh, man, I really forgot a lot of stuff, have I? Oh, really? Well, that's surprising. So, uh, what do you want me to do now? Do you have any ideas? Oh, yeah, sure. I guess I can do that. Well, thanks a lot, Biff. So, um, let's do this. Time to go back. Here we go.